So second technique, I'm going to mark the length of my blade. Okay. It's now using these corners on the anvil. Flipping both sides and hammering at an angle, drawing out the heel. And once again, the quicker you can get back into the forge, the less stress you're putting onto your metal. And there we go. So less stress you're putting on your metal, and uh, the quicker you can continue working. Now I'm just going to clean up. Obviously going to the edge there will let me get onto that lower edge. Coming back on this side. You'll also notice my plunge that section there, being a lot sharper. Well, on the one side, in any case. Okay, so there's the second technique. It's basically the same thing, but using different aspects of the, the end. So that one there, that one there. There we go. So I'm gonna put this back into the forge and continue working. So, next little step here is I've created that there. Okay. It is nice in the middle of my bar of steel and I just want to clean up that little corner there on the edge and then right above it I'm just going to give it away. There we go. So now I've got a sharp little corner there and to take care of this bowing on my anvil and then just when you're doing this, hammer that. Be mindful not to hammer the heel of the knife. Okay, so now I'm going to do as I'm just going to draw out the rest of my edge. Now look at where I'm hammering. I am hammering right there. So where I'm hammering is right there. But on this side, flip it over. Same thing on the other side. Moving on to my next section of my blade and then hammering that. Now as you can see, the edge thickness is not consistent, so I'm going to start back here on the next run get my edge to where I'm currently hammering, same consistency, and then moving on. Okay, so moving on to the next section of my blade. All I'm gonna do first is just make sure that everything is centered and that my edge thickness is consistent before moving on to the next section. Oh, there we go. Next section, keeping my hammer blows consistently on both sides, slowly moving up the blade and getting that edge thickness the same from the heel right through to where I'm working. Okay. Keep in mind the thinner your metal becomes the quicker it'll cool down. Alright so you can see I've still got red in the blade but that edge is already black so no hitting that. Okay so moving on to the next section one, two, three, the blows, flipping it around, flipping it around, and obviously my hammer blows become softer as soon as I get to the edge, making sure everything is consistent, both sides, getting rid of the irritating fire scale, and now what I'm doing is I'm moving up in the middle of my blade, flattening things out. Okay, so my metal is cold. I am going back into the forge. So continue working on my edge. Now you'll notice this little wiggly waggly thing I've got going on the edge there. All right, just taking my hammer, hammering those in very, very lightly, making sure that my edge is straight. Okay, well, straight, that there's no bumps. All right, and then working that edge again. Now coming back into the center of my blade, Back up the center of my blade. And I'm cold. still working up the center of my blade. I've got more controlled hammer blows. And what I want to do is create a flat surface from the edge to the spine. Focusing my blows on both sides. 
and I've got black metal. So it's back into the forge. So still working, that's fine. Making sure that everything is nice and flat. Small light hammer blows. And you can see all I'm trying to do here is get rid of all the little forging marks in my steel. Okay, so my surfaces are nice and smooth, and if I turn it just correctly, you will notice that my plunge has actually hammered in. So that there. Okay, so that happens naturally. Just keep in mind that you don't want to hammer past this. Okay? Same on the other side. This side doesn't look as neat, but she's there. So to get those, Practice, practice, and practice. Now, the next step is you see this little bow I've got in the spine there, as well as this little crookedness we've got there, this little hump, and this crook. Okay, this crook, crook bend that there, you can take out with the anvil slap and then sort that tip by forcing it over into a flat spine. Okay, so. Uh, Let's get cracking, let's do this. So I'm down to an 800 gram hammer. Just putting my spine flat and using that there. And there we go. Okay, so I've got a nice flat spine. Still on my 800 gram hammer. What I now want to do is I want to create a bit of a drop point. So. Uh, Blade is on edge and I'm hammering down. As you can see, it's deforming. So then sorting out the deform, going down a bit more, sorting out the deform. Okay, and all I want to do is I just want to straighten metal. Hammering too hard here, you'll put a dent into your steel. And we obviously don't want that. Okay, so as you can see, that tip has dropped a tad more. I'm almost back at a spear point and I must admit that I am liking that. So what I'm going to do next is just clean up that blade, maybe bring that tip down a tad more, and uh, then that's it. Okay, so the forward metal is nice and hot, that little bow that was tempted to hammer out, I can now do. So all I want to do is flatten stuff out, clean up a bit, and just make sure that my edge and everything else is in alignment. Keep in mind that whenever you're hammering on the ricasso area, to do that very, very lightly, any and every single mark that you put in there, you will eventually need to take out again. Okay, so everything is nice and straight. I'm quite happy with that. The edge sits in the middle. I'm quite happy with that. I love the flats I've got going there, so we're happy with that.